today's Bible Deep Dive. This is Matthias 76, and together we are decoding the deception. We continue in Revelation chapter 1. We were partway through verse 5, so we will continue. Pick up again with verse 5. And Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. To him who loves us, we read in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. God loves us. That is a, a, a blessing, a reality that's so hard for us to get our minds around. And understand this, God loves us because he loves us. He loves us even when we were sinners, even when we were unbelievers. Romans 5, 8 tells us God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us and there is nothing that you can do that makes him love you more. He's happy for you when you're living your life, your faith in a way that is pleasing to him because you're happier. He's happier for you. It doesn't make him love you more. God loves you because he loves you. So to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, the cost of our spiritual freedom, our redemption, was the greatest cost imaginable. It was the cost of God's son, his blood, his sacrifice for us. And by that, he has made us, made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God. He's made us to be a kingdom. He took all of us, Gentiles and Jews, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from the United States, Peru, Australia, wherever. He made us into a kingdom. We are part of his kingdom together, united in that, blessed with that citizenship, that heavenly citizenship. And he has made us to be priests. We are blessed to be able to go boldly to God's throne of grace. We have access to him. That's what a priest does. A priest has access to God. We, he made us priests and gave us access to him. That's why the veil in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. We are all now priests to serve his God and Father to him. To him be glory and power and honor forever and ever and ever. Amen. Contrary to the thoughts and the schemes and the lies and deception of the prince of this world, these things, glory and power, that praise is due solely and only to God. Verse 7, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him so shall it be. Look, it says, it's, it could be translated better. The word behold says so much more. I know it's not a word that we use very often anymore, but it is far more accurate because it's saying this is something special. This is amazing. Look, he is coming with the clouds. In Acts chapter 1, when Jesus ascended into heaven, having given his disciples the mission of being witnesses to all nations, the angels came after Jesus had ascended and the disciples were standing there just staring up into heaven. Quite understandable. But the angels appeared to them and they said, This same Jesus 
who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. He's going to come back. He's going to come in the clouds. And what that means when it says that he'll come in the clouds and every eye will see him, it's key. Because everyone will know when Jesus returns. You're not going to need to see it on the news or or read it on the web. Everyone will know, and that is by design. He's going to come in the clouds and every eye will see him. We can't get fooled. We can't get fooled. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And here that's representative. It's specifically of those who crucified him, but it represents all those who have opposed him, who have warred against him, both when Jesus was here on earth, but throughout history, from the beginning of the history of God's working in our lives have warred against the church and persecuted it and pierced it, their eyes will see him return as well. Those who were persecuting the believers to whom John, those believers in those seven churches, to whom John addressed this letter in their specific sections of this letter, even those who pierced him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. That term, peoples of the earth, in Revelation, it designates unbelievers. It's used consistently that way. It's peoples of the earth. They're not of God's kingdom. They have chosen to not be part of God's kingdom. They have chosen to be those who love the world and the things in the world and to not be a part of God's salvation. And what will they do? We are told they will mourn because of him. All will see. Everyone's going to know that he has come back, but not all will rejoice. There are those who were perpetrating the persecution against the people in those seven churches in that day. Well, in this world, they have their victories, right? But those victories in the end are turned to defeat. They're turned to everlasting defeat. And it says they will mourn because of him. And literally, that word means to beat the breast in anguish, in torment. Truly, they will mourn. And John says, so shall it be. Amen. They may fear it. They may dread it. They may try to convince themselves that it's not coming, that Jesus isn't coming back, that that's all some fairy tale. We know We know that it is the truth and that he is coming back for he has promised. Jesus says of different signs and things that we see that will be covered in great detail later in this book. He says, when you see these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your heads because your redemption is drawing near. That from Luke 21 verse 29. So the the things that seem to be negatives that this book lays out, those things are to us a message. They're a reminder. They portend the future that Christ is coming back, that what he has told us is the truth. You see, it's all about perspective. Perspective. When I struggle in whatever way in my life, when you struggle in whatever way in your life, it is always for the same reason. It's always the same thing. We have lost perspective. I've lost perspective of who I am as a child of God. I've lost perspective of, of what's important, of what matters, of what he wants for me and the service that he would have me give. It's perspective. My perspective is that my Lord is coming back, and that's a joyous thing. I can't wait. I can't wait. There may be trouble and persecution and whatever else between now and that day. It's okay. He's told me about it, and he has assured me he's got it. He's in charge. He always wins, and he always will win. And to whatever degree he has me play a part in that going forward, I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm thrilled 
to be his servant and fulfill whatever it is he has for me. Because he is, as he says, I am the, verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. You know that term, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, it could be A to Z. It's the first letter in the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. That is there. But there's more. There is more. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is everything that matters. He is the message of salvation. He is the one who declares it to us. He is, he is all of that. He is all of that, says the Lord God. Now, exegetically, meaning how we interpret this, that statement, says the Lord God, it, it could indicate that this is God the Father speaking. That term is used often in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, meaning just that, the Lord God. But here, it, it's not exclusively. And here, because of what it says next, who is and who was and who is to come. Who is to come? Who is the one about whom we're told he is yet coming? He's coming back. If I go, I will prepare a place for you, and I'll come back, he says. That, to me, indicates that this is probably Jesus speaking here, and therefore, we're looking at the New International Version, that translation. They probably got it right with having the red letters. But remember, the red letters in the translation that you use, they are not inspired. It is the decision of an editorial committee whether the red letters go there or not. And usually... There, there isn't an issue. There's not a problem in whether it should be indicated as being the words of Jesus or, or not. Well, we're going to stop there. Fairly short section today, but we're going to stop there because next time we're jumping into a longer section and I don't want to break that up. Remember, this is a series in our Bible deep dive here at Decoding the Deception. It is a series, and in this series, you can go on our YouTube channel, and there will you'll find there a playlist for the Bible deep dive dash revelation. Each one of these videos will be added there as well as being added to the YouTube channel individually, and you'll be able to scroll through and pick up your place, go back and hear things that you might have missed or that you want to hear again. And also, just a reminder, you can go at any time to our website, decodingthedeception.com. You'll see it on the screen there. It's more than your average website. We've got a lot of resources built into it with a research tab with a lot of great information in decoding the deception of this world and a lot of what's going on. But also way over here on the right, we've got Bible blog and you can click there and then you can scroll down and you're going to see we've got two different columns, Bible deep dive. Every broadcast we do here will be posted here as well as on YouTube, but also the morning Bible blast. If you're not making use of the morning Bible blast, it's a morning devotion we put out every day. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified every morning when you wake up. You can listen to it as you get ready. You can listen to it as you're in your car on the way to work. Don't watch it while you're in your car. Um, but we keep those five to eight minutes in length. So there's just a quick Bible blast in the morning to get you started in the Word of God each and every day. Well, that's going to conclude what we're doing here today. But we will continue with our Bible deep dive in the book of Revelation. That concludes our Bible deep dive. We encourage you to go to our website and there on the home page, down in the lower left, we have a place that you can give us your email address. We don't want to let the social media technocrats keep us apart. Remember, YouTube can shut us down at any time. We have a backup plan. 
And we promise we won't use your email address for any other purpose. We need your support. You can do that on our website at the support page. It's very simple also down below. There's a link to Patreon and our PayPal page. You can support us there. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. And if you like it, please consider sharing. We would love to have you subscribe. And if you subscribe, please remember to click that bell so you get notified when we put out new content. Finally, down below, leave your comments. We love to hear from you. That feedback means a great deal to us. This is Matthias 76. We are decoding the deception. God bless and have a great day.